So, I just beat the story mode of Sparking Zero on stream, stream right now while I'm recording this, and I can give my honest review on the story mode. I want to make this video as a review video. It will have spoilers, but you know, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, okay? I want to do this because I know most people didn't play the story mode for Sparking Zero because it's like, oh, it's the same old, same old, oh, it's boring, yada, yada, yada. So, and I know people, most people just ran to rank, they had no reason to play story mode because it's like, I get all the characters from the bandit from the shop. So, I wanted to play the story and see is it cut and dry or is it worth doing? Okay. And I'm giving my honest opinion. If I had to give y'all like an overall grading of the story mode in Sparking Zero, I have to give it a five out of 10. Yeah, I have to give it a five out of 10. It is a hundred percent in the middle. It's mid, I'm gonna be honest, it's mid. Okay, it has some few high points that probably can bump it up to like a 5.5, .5, maybe a six, but for me, it's a five, and I'll explain my reasoning why. So first, we're gonna talk about the Goku, the Goku story, right? Goku story mode is a good example of started off so strong and ended so short, and it sucks. It really sucks. So what I mean by that is like. I actually went to the, the story map thing, didn't I? I did. I was trying to go to the story map, I mean. So, what I mean by that is like, when it came to advertising this game, they selling point was the what if. And they used that as a bargaining chip to basically say, this is the reason why we're not gonna spend time basically polishing the story mode. So the, re the real reason why I gave the story mode a five out of 10 is because they cut the corners with this game when it comes to story mode. It's very bare bone when it comes to um, passion and creativity. What I mean by that is like, when the cutscenes, I do not like that PowerPoint is trash. Trash. I don't know why they did the PowerPoint thing. It's ridiculous. Too many cutscenes, the person talking, and they did not do any type of animation riggings for the models in the game. So all you see is like a Muppet mouth just moving, and it looks super weird while the facial structure is not moving at all, or there's no breathing of the character, none of that. It's so weird, so bad. It's a lot of reading instead of actual voice acting, and it's not it's not a lot of cutscenes in the game either that makes the game worthwhile, visually pleasing looking at, especially since the fighting in the game is very beautiful. I would love to see a lot of that in natural cutscenes. The cutscenes look very jarring and not that very appealing to what the game should have should be able to amount to with a PS5 new gen console game, especially when Dragon Ball Kakarot came out on PS4, I believe. So this should have definitely had some type of level of beauty to the goddamn mix. I'm not saying it's supposed to be story based heavy. I know a lot of people say it's a fighting game and not supposed to have story based, but if you compare it to the old Tekaichi games, Tekaichi always been a single player game with a lot of single player content in the game. With story mode to the other side, activities like Mission 100 and stuff, survival mode and all that type of stuff. So they could have put a lot more effort into the story. Now Goku, that's just a general thing. Now Goku review, it started off powerful because of the what they showed in most of the trailers with the Sand Saga alternate routes with Goku being able to stay alive from not dying from Piccolo's special being against Raditz and not getting Piccolo's help with Raditz. Depending on which route you take, Goku can end up having Krillin die on Earth and getting Super Saiyan on Earth. And then Goku will go to Nemi by himself with Super Saiyan to fight Super Saiyan Vegeta. Because Vegeta would fight Freeze on Nemi and y'all class that out, which was a very unique what if scenario. I think the best strong suit of Sparking Zero's story modes are the what if scenarios that once it happens, it changed it changed the whole saga playthrough into the next saga as well. So just you doing this one decision in the Sand Saga, literally it changes the whole saga all the way to Namek for Goku, which is amazing. Um, and then even the alternate route where if Goku do have Piccolo help but doesn't die to Special Being Cannon, Goku will literally stay on Earth, train the Earthlings, yanching them and whatnot, and Frieza and them will raid Earth, and Frieza and them come to Earth with the Ginyu Force and whatnot, and Vegeta comes to help Goku and them out, 
and you fight Frieza on Earth without getting Super Saiyan, and you'll actually beat Frieza with the Spirit Bomb, throwing hands and everybody working together. Amazing storytelling of a what if scenario of changing the whole storyline completely as something new on a uh, very important decision making. But then, after the game sponsored the Sand Saga, it, it falls short once you get to the Nemec Saga. Once you get to the Nemec Saga, things just go haywire when it comes to the what if. It's like they didn't do any type of creativity at all. The what if at the beginning was, what if you defeat Jace instead of Berta? So I was like, oh, that makes a, a big difference because Berta can go faster than Jace, so he can hurry up and tell Ginyu, and then things can change up because he's the fastest, you know, thing alive type is. No, it doesn't. It changed nothing. It's the same results. It's just it's a different person with Captain Ginyu, but that doesn't change the results at all. And then when it came to the Freezer, what if it was just literally you beat Freezer without using Spear Bomb and you and you kill Freezer? That's it. You prove you're stronger. And if you use Spear Bomb, you get Super Saiyan like usual. And there was no what if scenario with Goku fighting Freezer, and that was it. There was no real creative what if scenario for Goku in the Namek Saga, which is a letdown. Then you get to the the Android Saga, and it's the same thing. There was no unique what if saga for Goku in the Android Saga. It, it felt like it just felt very underwhelming. The only thing that actually felt good in the what if saga for our Android Saga was the one where Goku goes to Piccolo when he's fighting Android Seventeen. And he defeats Cell at that moment. So Cell do not get any transformations. But then Goku has to fight 16, 17, and 18. And that was a unique scenario. And then it ends there. After that, Goku had no unique other what if after that. That continues like no unique thought out, well fleshed out what if like the Sand Saga. After the Sand Saga, the only fleshed out one a little bit is that one I just said about the Android one with beating Cell early. Other than that, and, and that one was cool, it was alright, but it wasn't as good as the Sand Saga one. After that, you're just, you're just nothing for Goku. You go to Majin Saga, you go to Majin Buu, and, cause even with this one, you defeat Seo, and that's it, you just get a little PowerPoint cutscene, and that's it. It doesn't change much at all. It's very boring, very boring and half ass to, to be honest. Do you the what if, um, if you actually wear down Majin Buu within the time limit of Super Saiyan 3, Goku. And all you get is a cutscene where Majin Buu turned good because you bribe him with candy and you erase his memories basically with the Dragon Balls and bring everybody back. And that's it. Just a cutscene, just PowerPoint. It doesn't continue on to the next saga or anything. It doesn't make a big change. Which was, again, I feel like that's very half assed I don't like the What If Sagas where you just do one thing and then they give you a cutscene and that's it. It doesn't change anything at all. Um, after that, there's no other What If Saga for Goku in the Majin, in the Majin Saga, whatever. When it comes to the Frieza situation, um, there's no real what if. You Instead of Frieza getting a chance to blow up the earth, whatever, and then we rewind time to give you a second chance, you just beat Frieza off back. And yeah, that's it. Nothing changed. So then you sit here, it's like, what was the point in that what if? Because it ended up being the same results. When we reverse, ba reverse back time, you get the same cutscene with Goku using Kamehameha High uh, to kill Frieza. If you don't do that, Goku still does Kamehameha and kill Frieza. So, it, again, another pointless what if that kind of pissed me off a little while playing the game. And then the main one that pissed me off playing with Goku's what if saga was this one right here. When Goku get pissed off when he find out Goku Black killed um, Chi Chi and Goten. You kill Goku Black when Goku's pissed off. And then the cutscene shows Goku still pissed off fighting Zamasu, and they say Goku gives his all to fighting Zamasu, but Zamasu's immortal, so Goku get exhausted and still lose the fight. And that's the end of the what if scenario. They don't do no what if like, oh, Goku did Mafuba on Zamasu, or Goku finds it a whole different way and probably like a Hakai got in Zamasu, like in a manga or something like that. Something. Or, or he calls Zeno. Nothing. They just end the cutscene with Goku just losing. It was a dark ending. I was like, what was the point is what if? Of beating Goku, killing Goku Black while Goku pissed off. Then what was the point? I'm pretty sure because how weak Zamasu is, Vegeta and they didn't throw Vegeta and Trunks in the mix. You know, Vegeta and Trunks is there. Literally, Goku, Vegeta, and Trunks just keep jumping Zamasu until they can figure out a way to seal the man or something. You know what I'm saying? A, 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 a answer. Nothing. Um. So that was very, just very, just underwhelming. And the Goku Black, anything changing? And then the what if in the uh, tournament power uh, survival arc, whatever, 
the what if is just literally you doing different fights on who choosing who gonna join your team whether Majin Buu, Andrew 17 or TN and and that's it once you get in tournament power at the end it's just Goku the last what if is if you beat Jiren with Ultra Instinct within a time limit while Goku goes in Ultra Instinct did you get a cutscene it's the same thing Goku no win Goku just didn't you know Goku get, didn't get knocked out with Frieza and they all there and they still do the same wish so the only unique what if scenarios in Goku's story mode is the Sand Saga and then now one what if in the Cell Saga in the Android Saga whatever other than that it's very lackluster and a lot of that star showing in the other people's story modes as well um so if i had to give goku story um a rating i'll give goku story because of the sand saga and that one android side i give goku's story like probably like a 6.5 um vegeta story kind of the same boat but worse so vegeta story if vegeta one of your favorite characters vegeta what if it's like an ego trip it basically all the what ifs are if if Vegeta didn't basically throw in the anime. So and even then they even let him throw and still win. So like in the Android saga, the what if is like what if Vegeta allowed Cell to go perfect Cell, and that's probably the best fleshed out one they did because Vegeta ended up making Cell go perfect Cell, but um, Vegeta still ended up ends up giving Cell a good fight. So then Cell still does the tournament and. While Cell does the tournament, Vegeta gets Super Saiyan 2. And while Vegeta got Super Saiyan 2, uh, basically Vegeta fights Cell. Trunks helped Vegeta with Final Flash, Father and Son Final Flash against Cell, Comic Coming Hot, and that was it, right? That's probably the best fleshed out one. Everything else is like nothing special. Vegeta does nothing special in the Namek Saga. It's the same usual story. Um, like I said, the only fleshed out story in 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 this one is um is trunks and vegeta being the one the father and son that defeat sale uh yeah the uh the one in Majin saga is if vegeta didn't let bobby brain control him and then what what typically happens there is the norm they fight deborah they kill deborah because they killed deborah and stuff majin buu never got made they killed bobby D. And then Goku and Vegeta have their fight in the tournament. That's like the good ending everybody was expecting in the anime if Vegeta wasn't dumb enough to become brain controlled. Um, yeah, after that, there's no unique scenario. At the end, they let Vegeta do his little fight against Goku instead. So Vegeta was strong enough to hold back Kid Buu to give Goku enough time to get strong enough power in Super Saiyan 3. And then they both do a blast at Kid Buu and kill him. I don't know how that was enough but apparently it was enough and then they end vegeta's what if with him fighting goku super saiyan 3 and him beating goku right vegeta does not get the fight in the tournament of power or get the goku black saga as well or against revenge of frieza G vegeta gets no dragon ball super story at all and it sucks because there's so many what if scenarios they could have did with vegeta actually being the one to fight frieza and kill him instead of goku taking the kill after playing around they could have did Vegeta against Goku Black and actually getting revenge from killing Boma in, in Trump's timeline. They could have did um, Tournament of Power. We did not get the joy of fighting as Vegeta with Blue Evolution against God of Destruction Topo, even though every other god dang story in this game allows them to fight God of Destruction Topo, except the person that actually fought God of Destruction Topo. Not in the game. So Vegeta, if you're a Vegeta fan, you probably love the ego trip of Vegeta getting some wins against the niggas he threw on and gave him a chance. Um, but me personally, I have to give Vegeta storyline like a... I had to give it a low score, man. I had to give Vegeta's freaking a, a 5 out of 10 or 4 out of 10. That's where I'm at right now. I'm at that. I'll give Goku's story a 7 out of 10 and I'll give Vegeta's like a 5 out of 10. Gohan had probably the most well fleshed out story in this game with a what if saga that goes into other what ifs with gohan and i hate this game skip universe six versus universe seven um tournament arc with goku against hit and Kaio kaioken whatever they skipped that whole arc but apparently gohan fights in that tournament with goku now and he actually fights hit and wins and he get recognition for that 
So then, not only did uh, Gohan get recognition for that, Gohan actually beats Frieza when he comes to Earth instead of Goku and Vegeta doing it. So because of, Go of Gohan getting that recognition from being hit, um, it goes across the universe just like when Goku and then Go Gohan basically take Goku's spot and then Zamasu end up wanting to take Gohan's body. Then that's when the Gohan Black situation happened. And the Gohan Black story mode was just like the usual story mode. It was just Gohan and Gohan Black still had the same moves as Goku Black. Same scenario, but instead of Gohan um, having to do like a spirit bomb thing like Trunks or fusing them by Goku and Vegeta, Gohan ended up using Mafuba and not fumbling. And actually, Mafuba uh, fused Zamasu and seals him away. And that's how they win. Him and Trunks have like a brotherly moment there and they fight together and beat Zamasu instead. So, all in all, I have to give Gohan's story. Um, like an 8 out of 10. Very fleshed out. There was no kid Gohan for Gohan story. They go straight to teen Gohan. And yeah, nothing nothing really unique happened in the Android saga for Gohan. Gohan, what else happened all the way till um, starts in the super arc. Teen Gohan ain't get nothing when it comes to what if. Except you actually killing Sale without actually wasting time. But it's just a cutscene after that. And Goku doesn't die. You go home and Chi Chi happy that Goku and Gohan's alive. Um And that's the same thing with Gohan's. I mean Goku's scenario as well and his. Um But yeah, other than that, Gohan don't get no real good what else scenario until Dragon Ball Super. As you can see, when you beat Go when you beat Freeze by yourself with Gohan, you get this whole long route. Of Gohan recognition and fighting against Frieza with Ultimate Gohan beating Frieza, um, helping Future Trunks, Gohan Black scenario, all that. He get a whole scenario on his own. And then Tournament Power, nothing changes. Nothing changes. It's just Gohan end up being a good team player and help them end up winning the tournament without getting knocked out. But yeah, I gotta give Gohan's story an 8 out of 10 because of how fleshed out they went with Gohan having a major role in Dragon Ball Super Art. Since Gohan didn't technically get that, in Dragon Ball Super. Um, Piccolo's Piccolo uh, story went very fleshed out his what if in the Android Saga. In the Android Saga, they give Piccolo a chance of being be the one that like, when he falls 17, Cell pop up, Piccolo still kills kill Cell and they continue to fight in 17, 17 and walk off. But, you know, that wasn't really a good fleshed out what if. The real fleshed out what if is if Piccolo's the one that beat um, Android 19 and saves Goku life and then end up going a whole father-son bonding with Gohan scenario where, where Piccolo the one that trained Gohan and Gohan gets Super Saiyan 2 and whatnot and they the ones that fight Sale and whatnot so you get a whole fleshed out different scenario which was very very top notch and then the other what else scenario Piccolo had was um was uh him beating Frieza but they, it didn't go that far in the scenario so I didn't I wish it went a little further but I did respect them having a Namekian that ended up, you know, saving Namek and not someone else. Uh, they also had a what if with Piccolo beating Vegeta, but again, it didn't really go that far. Again, the only good what if is with the the bonding between Gohan and Piccolo doing the sale art. So if I had to give Piccolo's uh, story a uh, grade, I have to give like a six out of ten below Goku, six out of ten. Uh, Trunks. Trunks' story was very, very good. So after you do the whole what the whole scenario with Goku Black, um, nothing was really unique in the Goku Black um, story. The what if don't get really good until after Goku Black. After Goku Black, they asked Trunks, do he want to stay and um stay in the in the present time they was at with Goku and them and train to get stronger before you go back and. In the what else scenario, he, he ended up freaking actually succeeding with the Mafuba on Zamasu and sealed him away, and then they just jump Goku Black and kill him. Um, so that was a what if, a cool what if, but that's like a you know obvious what if. But like I said, when Go when Trust decides to stay in the present day, he joins the tournament of power, and the tournament power tournament of power end up going into another goddamn what if scenario where he decides if you want to work with Vegeta or work with android 17 and gohan we end up doing some unique scenarios and trump end up going through some like character building doing those arts so it was really good really good 
Um, but because Future Trunks don't have that much story, since he's only in one arc, it was kind of cool to see him lead them lead him into the turn of power, see how things turn out with Trunks in turn of power instead of them getting freeze on the team. So that was pretty dope. Um, I have give Trunks' story a 7 out of 10. 7 out of 10. Just solid. It's just real solid. Most of his story is a what if scenario on being a tournament power. Everything else is just like, you know, Goku Black, get him out the way, then the real interesting things, interesting things happen. Freeze the story. I don't know why they wasted time with villains having what if stories in here. Freeze the what if story, I, I'm gonna be honest. I kinda wanna give it a four out of 10 cause it, it kinda assessed me on how tedious it was. Um, It was unique, but then also tedious. So you play as Freeza during Nami Saga and the what if scenario is like if he beat Goku, and his friends, okay, cussing, he win, yada yada, no one can stop him. If you're going in Super Saiyan Goku, he beat Goku out going full power, yada yada, he win, he killed Goku doing a big little clash, whatever, right? That's it. Metal Freezer comes to Earth, he beat Trust, and then Goku pop up, and he beat Goku. That was kind of cool. That was kind of cool. Goku and Freezer get their little re reunited fight again, right? But the real cool part is the revenge of uh, Freezer popping up. Uh, this one's unique because Frieza wins and the Beerus stopped Frieza from killing Beerus stopped Frieza from killing Goku and Vegeta, which leads to a long what if scenario where Beerus allowed Go uh, Frieza to live and do whatever he want. So then Frieza used the Dragon Balls because he bargained with Beerus, used the Dragon Balls to bring back his his soldiers back to life, or whatever. But then they asked Frieza to join Turning Power, then Frieza stay on one condition, Beerus. I'll join if you let me bring whoever I want to the tournament. So then I was like, that's cool. Cause they let you ask, they actually let you ask Cooler to join the tournament with you. Even though Cooler not canon, it was part of what if. And I was like, that's dope. Y'all letting a person from a movie that's not canon actually be in a story mode. I like that ish. And the tournament power was cool with him. But then that's when the what if got tedious because then they made me have to do the what if scenario. But every other teammate, if Frieza asked them on the team, so you had you were able to ask Zarbon Dodoria, you were able to ask King Cole, your father, to join, and you were able to ask the Ginyu Force to join. Every scenario was different, and but the difference was just you fighting different opponents inside tournament power. It still ended up being the same result as the very end of you just winning. So I didn't like that. It was just very tedious to do. Um, but I did the, the scenario itself was pretty cool. The scenario itself was pretty cool, but it was very tedious and that's what was the upsetting part. Especially King Cole. King Cole got killed at the very beginning of the scenario. Uh well knocked out the turn the ring, whatever, immediately. He didn't he was no help at all. So I felt like it was just tedious on that part. But it was an interesting scenario nonetheless. But I still had to give it like a four out of ten. It wasn't that interesting. I didn't really need Freezer to have his own story mode. It didn't do nothing really that creative for me to be like, oh yeah, Freezer need to have one. Same thing goes for Goku Black. Goku Black, I ain't gonna lie to you. I want to give Goku Black story a uh, one out of ten. I'm not gonna lie to you. You did the Goku Black story with Goku and Trunks and Gohan. You did this saga so many times in the story mode that it started getting annoying seeing the same cutscenes, the same dialogue, just in a different person's perspective. It was an, it was annoying. But the thing that really makes it annoying for Goku Blacks. Is because you already know the one scenario you actually beat Goku and them and you get you you end up succeeding with the mortal plan right and then they end up doing these what if scenarios where it's like it's the same result you just got me doing tedious work it doesn't change anything it's just one one result is me actually fusing one result is me not fusing one result is freaking um they fuse and I still beat them in regular form like it's just so many goddamn like who cares right like it, it, it just nothing changed no, just nothing changes right so that was the annoying part. That was the annoying part. It just got tedious. And what made it even more annoying was the long dialogue of Fusamasu. It just made it so annoying and monotone to hear him do them long ass dialogues that it just made this story mode just very just, I just wanted to do it just to get out the way. It was nothing unique about it. It was like, okay, I know I beat them, yada, yada, yada. It would have been cool if after I beat freaking Goku now, then Beerus and them popped up with some crap. Beerus like, yeah, we can't let you be over here acting like God Destruction. I'm the God Destruction. Then we fight Beerus some crap with that. You know, something unique. You know, if we if we probably doing the Zero Mortal plan, Goku not the only one. Those just Earthlings. Have us go against other people in the universe. It's like, nah, we're not finna have you just doing the Zero Mortal plan in Universe 7. Whether it was like, hey, you finna fight against Piccolo and them now. Or you finna fight against Frieza somehow or some crap. Or, 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 or Cooler. I don't know. Just something unique. 
for to, to for us to see them with the zero mortal plan not no jazz it can't even start it off with us killing them one by one before they went into the original story of goku black Nim. it could have been goku Nim black goku black Nim follow trunks into his time uh and follow trunks to goku Nim timeline and then it could have been Zamasu them like, oh, we see mortals here. We finna do the same thing like we did in our in our timeline. And then you fight all the mortals in Goku in them timeline, killing them one by one and stuff. That would have been cool. Fighting Tien, Yanchi them as Zamasu. They had so many different ways they could have went with Zamasu story with the zero, zero mortal plan. Just for us to stay in the same bubble of the saga itself, the arc itself. Just for me to sit here with these long drawn that dialogue, drawn out dialogue that I done heard with the other goddamn people story mode. For us to not have a what if scenario, a good what if scenario. It's kind of obvious the villains in this game. I win as the villain. That's it. But what are you going to do to make me stand out more? Frieza tried it with the tournament power with his own team, but that just became tedious work. The villain story modes in this game were very trash and very tedious and was not unique at all or fleshed out at all. Just like Goku no Saiyan Saga no. I would have loved to see if I win with Frieza or the villains in this game, I want to see them go continue on with their reigns in the other sagas to see how things would change if this villain lived and Goku and them died. Would they have fought the other villains to see how things turned out? Like, if Frieza beat Goku in the Nemesis saga, why didn't we see Frieza, you know, trying to go to Earth to, for the Dragon Balls again, the Dragon Balls there or some crap, and then Frieza run into Fighting Sail or... Frieza ran into fighting Majin Buu because he was trying to be the strongest in the world and he was warned his father told him never fight Majin Buu. It would have been cool to see Frieza run into Majin Buu because Bobby like, hey, I'm going to control the world. What, who do you think you are? And the Frieza like, well, time to put you down because I'm the emperor of the universe, right? Something unique. Villains fighting the other villains after they got the heroes out the picture. But we didn't get that at all with any of the villain story modes. It was very a letdown. Um, so yeah, Goku Black story mode, 1 out of 10. I did not need that shit. Jiren... Uh, Jiren Story Mode. Jiren Story Mode was what I thought it was going to be. A battle royale of just him fighting everybody. I think they're trying to make him the try hard story mode where it's like it's one versus three, one versus four people type ish. They didn't, but because Jiren's, is, Jiren's literally in the last arc of the god name's uh, anime, whatever story, whatever, they can't really do much for Jiren what if scenario because he's in the last arc. So, I don't know why they gave Jiren a story to begin with, to be honest. Out of all the characters they could have chose, giving Jiren a story was just pointless. They shouldn't have did it. They shouldn't have did it. I would have probably preferred Majin Buu having a what if story of us eating people as chocolate and doing Super Bowl and all that type of stuff. I probably would have preferred that than Jiren having a story. It's literally just a battle royale of you just fighting multiple people in one, in one run, which is easy to do because Jiren can just meditate and get his health back. So, um... 0 out of 10. 0 out of 10. I don't think Jiren should have a story to begin with. Was his last cutscene good for the what-if scenario if he beat Goku and him? Yeah, it was cool with the uh, cutscene, I guess, but I don't think he needed a, a story at all, so 0 out of 10. That's my full review, honest review of the story mode. Um, to wrap it up, I truly believe they should not have done story uh, character-based story mode in this game because a lot of things in this game that I would have wished I would have done in the story mode. I missed the, uh, I missed the what if stories that was like kooky, like it from the old Tekachi games, like Devil Man against Frieza, or Super Saiyan uh, Gogeta against Super Vegito, which is cool, because you know it's not possible, but they had the special scenario for it, right? Um, so I missed the unique what if scenario that they could have done if they didn't want to be so strict and bubbled in with the character specific story mode. I miss not being able to use certain characters in the story mode because they don't have a story. You know, not getting a chance to play with Go Tanks against Super Boo. That was a letdown. Um, not getting a chance to use Majin Boo against Evil Boo. Not getting a chance to play, um, I don't know, just other characters in the story mode that in the old Tinkachi games you was able to play with. I, I don't like that there was no movie sagas in this game. I would have liked to fight against Broly in the story mode, Bojack. Wheelo and stuff like that y'all put them in the game put they movies in the game or something you know what i'm saying um i didn't like while playing the story there's some maps in the story mode that's not in in the general game to play on like the giant crater map on the sale games uh you, you're not able to play that map for some reason the clean version of turning power is in the game you're not able to use that for some reason i i just don't know why right um 
the computer, the AIs in the game, I did appreciate the AI difficulty in this game. The AI, they would counter a lot and teleport a lot. And some people complained about it. I don't think it was actually hard. I think once you got muscle memory, the computers actually teach you how to vanish better with timing in the game and super countering. And show you how to like maneuver and dodge certain things. Like if someone dashes at you, you can do the swear X combo and vanish and kick them away from you. Like they taught me a lot of tech in the game from just fighting them in the story mode. So story mode definitely was good for the computers to get you better at the game. Some care, some computers were juiced up in the story mode at pivotal moments doing what if uh, situations like Super Saiyan 3 Goku against Vegeta was souped up or fighting against Super Saiyan Blue Vegito with uh with Fuse and Masu beat off arm worst fight ever because beat off arms and Masu was so trash in this game um fighting against broken Vegito Blue uh so yeah the AIs were definitely good in the story mode I just wish the AIs knew what to do when you go sparking they seem to not know how to get out the multi-hit combo or your infinite combo easy they would break out of it after you did like 17 18 hits on them they'll super counter then you just vanish and then you just do your ult but like yeah other than that i think the, comp the computers were pretty good to show you some tech to get out certain things but one thing computers did not know how to fight in this game just like other people is key blast spam the computer computer got effed up out of key blast spam in this game just like everybody else <laughs> but yeah that's my review of the story if i had to get a story mode a general grade like i said i give like a five out of ten there were so many missed opportunities of what if scenarios they could have gave to us in this game. But I truly believe they, they restraints of trying to do character based story modes ruined their what if scenarios. And certain what if scenarios they could have went further with it instead of doing the lazy ass work that they did with some of the what if scenarios ending with just a cutscene and not actually flourishing out even more. Um, they went very hard on Goku's beginning of his what if scenarios in Sand Saga and then they just went downhill after that. I, I, I guess it was just for advertisement appealing to the fans to buy the game right but yeah that's my whole review on it hope you got enjoyed my review that's my honest opinion if you didn't play the story um is it worth doing i wouldn't say anything crazy in the game in the story worth doing um if the cutscenes and stuff was actually fleshed out they actually put some love and passion into the creativity of the story cutscenes and stuff and animation rigs of the models and stuff if it didn't look as jarring, I probably would recommend people still play story mode. But since the modeling, the models look bad when it comes to them talking with the animation rigs and stuff, the lack of dialogue when you gotta read a lot, the PowerPoint crap, the 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 just just everything, just just it's not worth it. It's, the story mode is not worth it in this game. Um, and it even like pivotal, pivotal moments with certain things in the game you believe that should have some cutscene didn't have it. Um. Like when Goku did any command May, I believe it didn't do a cutscene of him actually hitting, hitting Frieza with it. It just did a PowerPoint thing with it, which is bad. They did a PowerPoint for the Spear Bomb against Frieza and and Kid Buu, which was bad. I I, it, it, I just wish it was more fleshed out cutscenes for more of the pivotal moments in the game that truly deserved it. But I love you guys. Appreciate you guys always. Let me know what y'all opinions of the story mode in the comments down below. If you did actually play it, let me know y'all review. And until next time, stay up. And man, this is just my opinion. If you enjoy the story, then you know kudos to you, man. I'm just being just being honest with my critique of speed running through the story mode within three days on stream to let you guys know how how it felt. <laughs>